bring in Will Geddes, a security analyst and the managing director of International Corporate Protection. They are a threat management company. And Mr. David Gardenstein Ross, an author and senior fellow at the Foundation for Defense of Democracies. All right, so Elise laid it out there well. Let me start with you, David. Why now? They tried to get this guy twice before. Is this about imminent threat or is this about ongoing operations? I don't think it's about imminent threat. I think ongoing operations is much more likely. When it comes to someone like Godain, who's a very prominent figure in the international jihadist movement, uh, essentially targeting of him is probably going to be driven by intelligence. There was also similarly uh, a raid, a U.S.-led raid in the same area in Barawe uh, last year, just about a year ago, um, and uh, it, it was unsuccessful ultimately. Uh, but that indicates that um, the U.S. will strike where it has an opportunity. Where it has an opportunity. Will, let's pick up on that point. Uh, why was there an opportunity in this situation? We do know that there are concerns that uh, there has been a kind of a closing in of personnel coming back to Somalia to join Al Shabaab. That is probably a recruiting concern, but why was this the opportunity? Well, I think, as your other guest was saying, Gadain is a, a, a mover and shaker within Al Shabaab, and he's been very much a driving force in trying to consolidate certainly the Al Qaeda assets in the region, and especially in terms of providing that sort of catchment area within Somalia for transnational insurgents to join their cause. Now, Gadain, being a driving force, is a key increment and a part of that whole structure, and to take him out will somewhat dismantle Al Shabaab's leadership. So to focus on him, and particularly from the intelligence that's born both from the African Union forces and the Somali forces, but in addition to that, foreign special forces which have been carrying out reconnaissance is a critical part of the campaign to try and undermine al-Shabaab's taking of movement. And as we've seen, certainly in this attack in Mogadishu quite recently, this is, they're, they're, they're getting braver certainly in some of their strategies. And that was an obvious concern, and you did hear from the people on the ground fighting against them that when there was word that the Allies were coming in, uh, they all but disappeared, the al-Shabaab fighters. So that was an immediate positive impact in that battlefront. But obviously, David, everybody has ISIS on the brain, and the question will be, why are you going after this al-Qaeda offshoot in North Africa when you have this emergent situation that is so urgent in Syria and northern Iraq? It certainly is urgent, but I think it's a mistake to take our eye off the ball when it comes to al-Qaeda. I think al-Qaeda is very much being underestimated right now for a variety of reasons, uh, one of which actually de uh, deals precisely with ISIS, which is we know that prior to Osama bin Laden's death, he really wanted to uh, rebrand al-Qaeda. He believed that its brand had been very much diminished by the excesses of uh, Abu Musab al-Zarqawi, who had led al-Qaeda in Iraq, which then became ISIS later on. Mm -hmm. And uh, w with ISIS's rise, it gives al-Qaeda a prime opportunity to rebrand itself as being a more rational, more moderate uh, voice of jihadism. And uh, as a result, I think uh, there's a lot of risks of more money channeling into the al-Qaeda network. Uh, a lot of uh, countries in the region, even those who are very moderate in their outlook, are looking at whether or not uh, al-Qaeda and some of its offshoots, such as the Nusra Front in Syria, should be seen as a counterweight to ISIS. And that's really problematic and will be, I think, a real problem for us in the long term. Al-Qaeda as the more moderate voice of extremism in Islam. That is a truly uh, relative and scary threat. But what does this mean in terms of the likelihood of action against ISIS uh, in Syria and or northern Iraq? Will, what do you think? Does this make it more likely that you see more military action? Well, I think it's inevitable somewhat, um, and certainly, again, following what your guest was saying, uh, the biggest concern that we have is a lot of these groups merging together. As, as your guest mentioned, uh, ISIS were born from an al-Qaeda front. So you have a consolidation of terrorist groups, and as we've seen this before, you will have various groups working together, sharing resource, sharing capability, and again, in this particular region, it's important to try and dismantle it where possible. Otherwise, you have an amalgam of all these various types of groups that are aiming towards fundamentally the same goals and therefore to focus on al-Shabaab is critical, particularly with the weak borders surrounding Somalia and their ability to spread. So the important thing here, David, to kind of come back to a point you made earlier on is that just because the focus, certainly the media focus, is on ISIS, that doesn't mean that the war on terror doesn't have several fronts that demand urgent action. 
Absolutely. One of them is Somalia. We could see uh, on Sunday a very spectacular attack um, launched against the uh, one of the major prisons in uh, Mogadishu. Uh, also elsewhere in Africa, you have <laughs> right now um, Islamist militias that took over um, the U.S. Embassy in Tripoli. Uh, fortunately, it had been abandoned before that, as well as many other major government buildings right now because of these groups. Uh, the Libyan government is unable to even exercise basic functions of government. You have a number of other areas, like in Nigeria, where Boko Haram just captured um, a, a major uh, city in, in Borno State. So all of that indicates that, yes, there's a lot of different fronts going on. There's a lot of interconnectedness between some of these actions. And we shouldn't, uh, by any means, think that Syria and Iraq is the only thing right now that matters. Rear, Rear Admiral uh, John Kirby obviously gives us the information coming out of the uh, Defense Department about this. Any word uh, from either of you two about whether or not this was deemed successful as an attack in terms of getting the leadership? No word? No, from, from my point, obviously, there's very little information that's uh -huh. still coming out at the moment. But uh, certainly I would say that the strikes by uh, UAVs and by drones is going to be considerably more successful because the reconnaissance efforts by special forces have been considerably more successful in determining the whereabouts of various key people. However, Al-Shabaab is a formidable foe. They're, they're, they're not foolish and they're not stupid, and therefore they will keep moving themselves around, and particularly some of their figureheads. It will be interesting to learn uh, what was deemed success here, and was there any ground component to it that involved non-Somali fighters? Thank you very much uh, to both of you, gentlemen. Appreciate it.